Hey Weather Warriors, in this video we're going to be tracking not one but two storm systems here. The first storm system is the storm brewing in the Rockies right now. This could become a cross-country winter storm and severe weather maker as it glides across the southern U.S. into the east coast and potentially become a massive powerful blizzard as it reaches the coast. Now what does that mean for the northeastern United States and Canada? We'll be talking about that and then also going to be talking about this more impressive swirling system out here in the Pacific Ocean very defined features here. This could become a cross-country system and eventually become a nor'easter after the 15th of December. We're going to be also talking about that as well as well as some educational tidbits in this episode of Weather Decoded TV. All right, guys, let's get right into it here. The first thing I want to show you here is kind of something cool here. You can see that up here in Canada, the clouds aren't moving. Well, that's actually snow being picked up on the surface. So kind of cool if you ever see that in the satellite. Now, let's get right into it here. We're going to be looking at the GFS. This is the first storm system we're looking at. And it's uh, really currently uh, delivering some snow for parts of Colorado, Utah, or uh, parts of Nevada and California. And that's going to really strengthen as it moves to the east. You can see Sunday morning into the afternoon, this really gains some steam here. Uh, a decent warm front, cold frontal inversion. You can see those temperature gradients, those dashed lines, essentially. The 540 line is your average uh, temperature being freezing. So that's kind of your rain to snow line. You can see there's some snow being indicated in Arkansas and Oklahoma. That's going to be some wet slop that comes down. Your more powdery stuff's going to be farther back. But uh, you can see the main cold air mass is way off to the north here, kind of right there marks the air mass into the north so this storm is really pulling out leftover cold air in its own storm generated cold air just not a whole lot to work with but that will deliver some pretty decent snow amounts in oklahoma texas arkansas and missouri through the day on sunday into monday night but look what happens here the storm system loses steam with that cold air getting wrapped around the, the, the cold air kind of loses steam and so does the positive vorticity which we'll look at in a second and that main polar air mass there's your gradient way to the north so that is going to lack the amount of snow that falls with the system as it moves into the tennessee valley but you can see this sharp arc of potential thunderstorms to the south along that cold front there might be enough moisture and instability that come up and deliver thunderstorms and even a couple severe thunderstorms in particularly Alabama, maybe even Georgia, and maybe even Mississippi uh, through the day on Sunday night into Monday. But watch what happens as this moves to the north, there is the potential for some redevelopment of snow in the northeastern United States down into West Virginia, maybe even Virginia, especially in the upper elevations where the mountains occur. But that main polar air mass is just sitting just to the north of the storm system. So I'm forecasting this mostly to be a rain event unless you're in the upper elevations. But the latest trend has delivered a little bit more snow for the northeastern United States right along the coast. This could prime that area for, for the bigger show later this week. So you could see a few inches. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that. So very, very impressive. But as that storm exits, it really, really gets going. We're going to go over to Tropical Tidbits. And this is something we really have to watch. Because if this happens any sooner, this wrapping, it could become a nor'easter. But right now, that doesn't appear to be the case. But look what happens here. This is uh, going to be Tuesday, a 960 low. You see that, that wrapping occurring right there, the 540 line way out on that side of that storm. Newfoundland, Quebec could get slammed with this storm. And as we head towards Tuesday night into parts of Wednesday here, look at that storm system swirling around. That rain to snow line all the way out here now. So cold air getting wrapped around, it's occluded now, but it's a 938 millibar low. So we're talking 40, 50 mile an hour winds with buckets of snow out there in Quebec. And you can see it right here. This is where it's forecasted on Wednesday around 12 a.m. There's, look at that, right there. Big, big low pressure system. Very strong winds. We're talking 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. Out in the, the Atlantic, it's even more than that. So a monster storm system. And uh, really just continues through the day Wednesday. And eventually weakens. Let's just see how much snow falls with that type of system before we go on to the nor'eastern, the northeastern United States. 
we're going to look at the actual snowfall amounts and uh, check out how much falls. So to total accumulated precip. And again, most of that is going to be snowfall. And you can see two to three inches of liquid there. So that's probably indicating two to three feet of snow plus for Quebec and Newfoundland, St. John's area or just the north of there. Pretty crazy ordeal going on. But like I said, that that's first system, it's not going to quite wrap. You can see here until it gets off the coast. If that happens any sooner, look what happens. I mean, this this could put the northeastern United States under feet of snow. So it was something we're going to have to watch at the moment. I'm forecasting that to be just a little bit too delayed. It's going to happen off the coast when that air mass plunges to the east. So probably going to mostly be a rain event unless you're in the upper elevations. But the second system we're watching here is the potential nor'easter after the 16th. We're looking at Wednesday right now, that storm system impacting eastern Canada, potentially one to three feet and 40 mile an hour winds. So blizzard conditions up there. But here's your second system coming out. You know, that low pressure system, there's that temperature gradient starting to form. But look at the 540 line. It's much farther south with this system. So there's a much better air mass in place for cold air. You know, your main air mass is way off to the north, but you do have some cold air sitting out here now in the central and eastern United States. And look at that, your first plunge of snow happening in new uh, parts of uh, West Virginia, Virginia, Ohio, uh, parts of Indiana, nothing crazy at the moment there. That's just moisture that kind of rides north, hits that 540 line, becomes snow and mixed precipitation. That's Wednesday morning. But watch what happens as we head towards Wednesday afternoon and into Thursday night. Really gets going. That low pressure starts to deepen. Once these low pressure systems hit the coast with those really warm waters, those are going to really enhance these low pressure systems enhance that gradient. We're going to zoom in, take a zoom in to the northeastern United States here. We're going to look at the European computer model because it's done pretty well. And I'm going to show you, there's that first storm system by the Euro, mostly rain. But here we go. This is going to be Thursday at 1 a.m. So very powerful storm system now. There's been remarkable consistency now in multiple models with multiple model runs. And it's been a pretty similar track here just off the coast moving northeastward and that would deliver snow for really all of Connecticut, potentially New Jersey, Pennsylvania, parts of Virginia, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, New York, really the, everyone up there, Boston, Massachusetts. Look at that. There's your band right there. Your heaviest snow band and lift is going to happen immediately north and northwest of that low pressure system. Typically, when you get these comma head type appearances right off the coast, your best mid-level lift usually occurs just to that north and northwest quadrant. And you can see very heavy snowfall rates in Pennsylvania. This is around Thursday morning, potentially one to three inches an hour. This has been very, very consistent, guys. So we're it's looking likely that we're going to get a nor'easter here. So this is going to happen Thursday night. Uh, the only issue I see with this system, and this is something we'll have to watch, is it ha with a La Nina type of year, we usually get very fast moving progressive systems. And that kind of trends that way on the model. So the models are forecasting feet of snow, but it wouldn't surprise me to see a little bit faster motion with the system than what the models are indicating. We'll have to watch that closely, uh, but this is going to be a fast moving, intense storm system. It's not going to be particularly long, but maybe several inches that stack up in a very short amount of time here. So this is Thursday morning. And then look at this right after Thursday morning, this thing's already gone for the most part. So this is a fast moving system. You know, if you're living in Eastern PA, you get your snow to start Wednesday afternoon and it's already gone by Thursday around noon or so. So six to 12 inches of extremely heavy snow, probably some wet snow, and then it's already gone. So we're gonna look at the actual amounts and I'm gonna show you guys the trends and what I think is gonna happen here. Uh, again, way too early to talk about amounts here, but uh, let's look at the uh, first storm system and then we'll look at the nor'easter here. Now the first storm system, we can definitely talk about amounts. This is the European. And you can see through much of uh, the central plains into the 
now well, southern plains into the rockies a good three to six inches or so this has been very consistent the nam actually is forecasting several more inches for arkansas even tennessee and missouri i don't think that's going to happen and the reason is the upper level lift here really starts to die out and i'll, I'll show you that you can see this pretty good impressive slug of energy this is on sunday comes through oklahoma you can see that uh, positive vorticity advection that's lift in the atmosphere that divergence very impressive but watch what happens as it just gets to the east it really kind of starts to die out and you also can see this in the upper levels it actually opens back up so it closes off then opens back up see how that cold air this is the height anomalies it's there Sunday, but then as we head towards Monday, Sunday night into Monday morning, it really dies out. That main air mass is to the north, so I don't think you're going to get much cold air for snow in Arkansas and Tennessee. So we'll go back to amounts here and uh, look at the actual forecasted amounts here. And again, three to six inches or so in Oklahoma and uh, potentially Kansas, maybe a, a little bit more than that. And again, probably a break but then it redevelops along the coast that's the thing we're gonna have to watch and you can see upper elevations european computer model forecasting two to four inches and then in the mountains some some areas more than six inches then that second wave comes through delivers parts of oklahoma and kansas another round of a few inches but then it really gets going as we head towards the northeastern united states as we get as much as one to three feet of snow by the european Again, I think this is going to be a little bit faster moving than what this model shows, but look at that. Northern uh, parts of Virginia, Vermont, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. A very impressive system of snow and maybe even reaching, again, Vermont, New Hampshire, and parts of Maine and New York. That's going to be the northern fringe of this thing. But we're going to have to watch this because previous runs were farther north. But at the moment, it's been remarkably remarkably consistent within this area. And it's been forecasting one to three feet for a, a pretty good amount of time. Like I said, I think these are overdone at the moment because I've, a La Nina pattern, it's often you see these things speed up a little bit faster than what the models show. We're going to do something called a trend, a model trend. And we're going to go out to about uh, the storm system. And what I'm going to do is show you the past several runs of the same time uh, time frame here and you can see the european computer model hopping around a little bit but very very consistent for this far out and you can see earlier runs had farther north uh farther inland with that snow but the latest runs a little bit farther south so there has been a southeastward trend i've noticed on the models and i think that will continue and again, I think amounts will come down just a little bit with that fast moving potential storm motions. But nonetheless, this area has not seen a big winter storm. And this could be a pretty big winter storm for that area. We'll look at the GFS and then uh, we'll wrap it up here. You can see the GFS has also hopped around a little bit, but been very, very remarkably consistent. A little bit farther north and uh, in a little bit stronger than the European farther north, more widespread. But overall, remarkable consistency right along the coast and just north of the coast is where that heavy band could set up. So definitely, definitely something to watch. And then the European or the uh, GDPS, which is the high resolution or the um, Canadian model, you can see it's very similar to the Euro right in that same band. So we have three different model runs showing the same thing in the same area. Now, does that mean it's going to happen? No, sometimes all the model runs could be wrong. Like I said, I think the amounts will be just a tad less, maybe something more what the the uh, GDPS here is saying, somewhere between 12 and 18 inches, maybe in, the, in the, the maximum area. You know, the European obviously has three feet, but I think it's gonna be a little faster mo motions than what that says. And then the other thing we look for is thunder snow. So are we gonna get any thunder snow? We're gonna go out to, and I'll show you that real quick. We're going to use something called mid-level lift, 700 millibar mid-level lift. And uh, the G the European does not have that, so we'll look at the GFS. Same ordeal. I mean, very intense snow bands around Thursday morning around 1 a.m. And uh, we'll look at the mid-level lift on this thing and 700 vortice, uh, vertical velocity. And very intense lift. And you can see this is uh, the thing we want to watch for. Somewhere around negative 35 or so can indicate some decent thunder snow if you have 
precipitation falling and you have that right along the coast and uh, we'll see if that area has precipitation obviously it does so right where that rain to snow line is we could be dealing with some some thunder snow so right right around that area right there and then maybe some thunderstorms that's where you get your best lift with these types of systems is kind of within that arc region right there of that low pressure system so potentially some thunder snow with this system as well fast moving event very heavy snow guys i'll be uh, updating you guys in the future for this system hope you enjoyed this video subscribe if you like updates like this and hit those bell notifications so that you get these videos hot off the press they're best when you watch them right away with the ever-changing weather so hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon